Hi everyone, I'm uh, putting this tutorial together to demonstrate how you can leverage the power of images when you're site modeling in Rhino, uh, particularly at the master planning stage where you're still kind of exploring preliminary ideas and instead of having to draw everything up in AutoCAD or model it in Rhino and split the terrain and uh, apply materials individually to everything which takes more time, this is a quick method that allows you to take your ideas whether you uh, create them in AutoCAD and just uh, capture an image or export an image of that site plan or if you're sketching on trace paper or using markers and pencils to do some quick um, layouts on the site and then you can photograph or scan those in uh, and apply them to the surface so this way it allows us to take a site plan drawing map it onto the geometry within Rhino and then of course you can add buildings and trees and things like that in to create a, a pretty nice 3D model without having to model all the geometry so there are a couple issues with um, doing this one is understanding how you map objects or images onto objects the other one is what renderer you're using. Uh, I'm using V-Ray for Rhino, uh, and there's a slightly different procedure if you're doing this with the Rhino render uh, because of the way V-Ray works within Rhino. In fact, if I, uh, and then I'll also talk about the orientation of the, of the geometry and the orientation of your images, because if they're not aligned, then there's more issues, and that's why I have two variations of this site plan. This is the original, pretty much parallel with the X and Y axes, and this one's been rotated slightly, so it's not uh, sitting in the same position. And as I go through this, you'll see how this affects the bringing in the image. Um, <clears throat> so let's start first with Photoshop, because if we're using images, that's where we want to go. So this is an image um, that I started with. Actually, it if I step this one backwards. It started like this. So this was a site analysis drawing of the existing trees on the site that we're working with. And this site's being used to um, do a residential development, community development. So we'll have three different types of housing units on it. Uh, and we have models for those from our students that we can just drop in. So if you can do a sketch of your basic layout or uh, come up with some alternatives, we can use this instead of having to model all the geometry. Now, as I said, the first thing is that's important is you want this orientation exactly the same way it is in Rhino, like this. And again, you'll see as I go through this how that affects it. Uh, that's the easiest way to make this work is just to get the images to, to be exactly the same orientation. Now, if you don't know, for some reason, the image that you're working with here is on a different orientation. What I'd suggest is you go back to Rhino. You could render this or export it as an image bring that into Photoshop, let's say it was this one, and then you can take whatever your drawing is in Photoshop and rotate it and scale it so it matches the same orientation as your site plan. That's the, that's the first and most important thing to do. You can, I'll show you how you can do it even if they aren't in alignment, but it's just a lot more work. So uh, I'm simply going to use the standard crop tool. And what you wanna do is crop it down right to the farthest corners. Okay, clearly this isn't a rectangle, it's got more than four sides. <clears throat> so it doesn't really matter. Whatever the farthest corner out, just bring the crop right to the corner. Okay, something like that. Click crop, and there we go. And it doesn't matter if you have, have uh, other drawing elements on the outside. Uh, you could go through the trouble, delete that, and have a transparent outer edge, but it's not necessary for what we do. Resolution, I usually go with, I mean, we can see this is image size is less than 1024 by 1024, which is okay. You can usually go up to 1024. If you want to double that, you can. It just makes the model a little slower. So you can decide how much resolution you need, but 1024 by 1024 is kind of standard for a, a V-Ray materials. And we also want to make sure we keep the performance. So I took this site plan, I took this drawing, and I added kind of a site plan development in there just to say, okay, this is one of my master plan alternatives. And I want to bring that in and to use it. I simply did uh, export as PNG. Um, no special settings or anything, just use the defaults. That works fine. And then I can come back into Rhino. Now what I want to demonstrate is I'm going to switch to my perspective mode. And what I've done in here also, just for your information, is I'm in shaded mode, but I've also went gone to the display options and I've turned the ISO curves off just because 
it's kind of visually uh, cluttery when I start to look at the images and everything else. You can set these preferences how you want. Uh, then the other thing I've done is uh, you can actually select the image and type set object display mode and click on the option up here and just say rendered. So even though everything else is displaying in shaded mode, you can get this image to display in rendered mode because otherwise you won't see the image once you attach it to the surface. And I kind of like to see the lines and other elements that are in there. But again, your preference, you can set that how you like. Now what I've done here is I've just applied a standard material to, to this one and I'm going to go through the process of saying, okay, well let's just, right now this is a this is just simply a rhino material, generic material. I'm going to go down to the textures fly out here and I'm going to click on color which is my diffuse map and I am going to grab that site plan and put it in there so you can see it brings it in it's not quite aligned it's close but it's not quite and that's where the UV mapping comes in but I'm not going to do that on this one I just wanted to show you that if you're using V-Ray you don't want to put the image onto the surface this way because it's a generic Rhino material and if I go up to my V-Ray render window. Well, sorry, I have this set in Rhino render right now. So if you render it in Rhino render, it's you'll be able to see it. It'll show up like that. But if I go to my render, current render and switch to V-Ray for Rhino, it just renders with this generic surface. And actually, I'll talk about this in another video, but I've, I've applied tune materials to this so that when it renders I can see the lines or the edges. Okay, so that's not really going to help me because I want to use V-Ray for, for Rhino to render all these. So what I want to do with this is to actually create a Rhino material. And I've, I've got one created, but I'll create another one. So I just click on Add Material. Generic is fine. Usually the first thing I do is right click on this and rename it just so I don't forget what it is. You can see I already have another generic material there, which I don't remember what it's for. So I will just call this site plan, site plan image, and then hit enter. Now I've got a new material, and you can see if this isn't showing on yours, if you hit the fly out, you can see there's lots of different options here. What I'm going to look at is the diffuse map and click on this. Uh, if you don't see the menu, you can click on that and choose bitmap. And there's my site plan, PNG. Hit back, and with this site plan geometry selected, I can right click on this and say apply material to selection and then I can close this down for now. So you can see the preview there and again it looks about the same right uh, as it did before but now if I render it with Rhino I'm not sure why my frame is off here but now it's rendering the way it's supposed to. Okay. Sorry, got all these lands designed. Got some plants in here that you'll see later, and that's what all those dialog boxes are for. Okay, so let's go through now and fix this alignment. So we've got the image applied. It's almost correct, but not quite. And that's because it hasn't had any mapping associated with it. So I'm going to select that geometry, go to my properties, and go to texture mapping. And the best option to use for this situation is to apply planar mapping. And once you do that, just come up here to the command line, and I'm just going to choose there's three settings to choose from. First, I want to use bounding box. That looks at the bounding box of the geometry, which is kind of what I cropped down in Photoshop. That's the same bounding box that we want to have as a reference for the UV mapping. I'm going to use the world coordinate and just UV. Now you can see that that just adjusted it. So now the edges of that are right aligned with the edges of my geometry and it fits in there perfectly. Try and do a real-time render here. All right. So we've got that mapped on there. Now, as long as your image has the same orientation as your site plan, as I said, as your model, that's all you need to do, and it's set. 
everything's lined up in there just the way it's supposed to be. However, if you've got a situation like this, let's go through the same process. I've already got the material made, so I'm going to select that, open my V-Ray window, right-click, choose Apply Material Selection, and you can see at first glance, it looks like it comes in, does come in about the same way. Now, if you're, you know, it is good enough for you, then your job's done, you can finish, but you can see it still isn't lining up very much. But now notice what happens if I go and apply the same planar mapping to it. Uh, bounding box, world, and UV. Now you can see it's, it's aligned it because the image orientation and the site plan, the model orientation aren't the same. Now it doesn't look like it lines up at all. And in fact, it, for some reason, it's, it's doing a little bit of distortion in there. But this is where I can use my mapping widget. So if I come over here and say show mapping, now I've got my gumball and I've got the options to take that image and rotate it, click on the center and move it. Now what I've discovered helps if you disable your, your object snaps because then you can adjust it. Now what I need to do is scale it and because it's somewhat distorted, I'm, I'm going to distort, scale it one dimension first. And the other dimension second to kind of get it into proportion. And this is the part that I'm not sure why I should have to do this. It ought to really stay lined up. I shouldn't have to change the proportion, but I'm trying to get it so it has about the same distance all the way around. Maybe a little, little more orientation. And then I can hold the shift key down and scale it in both directions. And maybe a little more this direction. There we go. So something like that. Now I've got that pretty well aligned. I can go click on the hide mapping button and I've got that set. Okay, so it's a little more trouble if your images aren't aligned, but if you run into that situation, that's how you get around it. You just have to make some adjustments until it lines up with those edges. And the nice thing about this is that once you've got, once you've got that done, uh, if I go over to my layers, so you have to put some buildings on there and planting. These plants were put on using the lands design plugin. So now I can come across here and I'm not sure why my render is off a little bit. I'll have to see if I can get it to render properly. One of the things you do have to, you might have to adjust is the exposure value because uh, these, I have kind of these generic colors on the buildings. They were color coded by type. Um, let's set this to widescreen. But these, this way I just drop the buildings in, line them up with the site plan, and then uh, added the plants or the trees around there. And now I've got something that I can do a pretty nice rendering of. There we go. So again, the colors are really bright. Um, but that was intentional to kind of not make this uh, about the detail of the architecture right now, just the number of, and type of units they're going to be on the site. But you can, so you can take more of a kind of bird's eye view from here if you want to, but we can also kind of get right down in there and look kind of a street level view. There we go. So without having to actually create any of the geometry for the roads or sidewalks or anything else, we can start generating some nice visuals from either a elevated view or from a ground level view. And I mentioned before, one of the things that I've done on this model, I was gonna look at it from a bigger outside view, is actually apply what V-Ray calls tune materials. And the tune materials 
give you the ability to add edges on things. So the first pass of the render, you don't see them, but then eventually uh, all these different parcels that are adjacent to this and the boundary, that proper line, show up in there without having to do any additional work in Illustrator or Photoshop to add those in if you wanted to see those. Uh, if you don't want to see them, then you can just swap the two materials for a standard material and uh, you won't get those edges. Okay, so that's kind of a quick um, introduction to how to add those images onto your site and align them with the boundary edges and then be able to use that to generate quick perspectives or renderings using uh, Rhino and V-Ray for Rhino.